Noise pollution. If you live in a city or you're in a suburb, sounds of traffic, leaf blowers, construction, cars, sirens. How can you ever hear yourself think? So much noise and static everywhere. I used to go out to this ranch and even there it wasn't quiet because I would keep talking. <laughs> I polluted the peace out there with my own voice. What's your point here? My point here is I'm scared of the silence. And so anytime I'm in nature, I'm scared of that quiet. Then, you know, bring your, you bring your music and you got your laptop and, you know, you infect and pollute and poison that silence. Now, I don't know how many of you guys meditate, but that's been a very powerful part of my spiritual practice in the last three or four years. It's not something I've done my whole life. I've been running away, drowning out everything with noise and distraction, weapons of mass distraction. You know, most of you guys know I was been arrested multiple times and running, hitchhiking, running from the law, running, doing graffiti, uh, running from myself, running from relationships, not wanting to listen. And it wasn't even me saying I want to wake up. It was my friends. It was like my close friends, my support, people close to me saying, we don't know you anymore. You run so fast, you run so far from yourself, we don't even recognize this guy anymore. You know, wake up, get help, or we're out. And of course, my response was F you, until I wasn't. It's the difference between changing your mind and changing your heart. The journey from your head to your heart will be the longest journey you ever take in your life. It sounds just like very simple stuff, Dave. Well, the sad thing is most people will go their whole lives without hearing the truth. Are you ready to hear the truth? The things your wives won't tell you, the things your husbands won't tell you, the things your best friend won't tell you, your boss won't tell you, your children won't tell you? Well, is it because I'm too fragile and I can't? Maybe that's part of it. You talking about confrontation? Yeah, but with kindness and gentleness. Kind confrontation. Did you just make that word up? Yeah, I did actually. Most of the things that I always talk about in here, whether it's art techniques or life or stories, they're all simple. They're not complicated. It doesn't take a, a brilliant mind to comprehend these things. They're all simple things. It's just really hard. It takes a lot of hard work. And that's not easy, but that's why we have each other. Ask for what you need. Raise your hand. Pick up the phone. Ask for help. Hey. I don't want to go this alone. Will you come with me? Will you hold my hand? Will you stand with me? Will you give me a hug? Will you lean on me? Will you raise me up? You have to be open. You have to let your defenses down. You don't know what you sound like. You don't know what you look like to others because you're you. So if the question is, do you want to wake up? And you're like, am I asleep? Do I want to wake up? What do I need to do? The first thing is you have to make a decision because staying asleep feels nice. It's cozy under those sheets. Waking up, man. I need my coffee. Splash that cold water on your face. And then you have to act. You have to move. You have to walk. You have to go outside. I'm getting too old for this S. But then you get to live. You get to experience life. So baby steps. First things first is you have to... You have to say yes. Yes, I want to wake up. It's on you. No one else can wake up for you. You have to make that decision. Then you have to be open to hearing feedback. Are you open for feedback? You need to ask, without getting defensive, other people's experience of you. Because you have your reality and then you have other people's reality and the truth is somewhere in the middle. And then you develop those ears, those listening skills. And listening for what? The truth about yourself. Dosumi.